All right, so the structure of atoms. What do these things look like? Well, chances are you guys are very familiar with the shape of atoms already. If you guys play any sports like baseball, golf, tennis, volleyball, any sports that use a round ball, that's the shape that atoms come in. They're round balls, they're round spheres. So whenever you guys think of what atoms look like, I want you guys to think of a golf ball, a baseball, or a volleyball. Because atoms come in spheres, but they come in all sizes. Okay, so that's what atoms look like from the outside. They're just round spheres. But what do atoms look like on the inside? Well, if you guys remember from GChem, there were three main parts to an atom. You guys remember what they were? There was a positively charged part, a neutrally charged part, and a negatively charged part. Protons, neutrons, and electrons, right? So let's go ahead and draw up a diagram here so we can see exactly what an atom looks like on the inside. All right, so here we have a diagram of an atom. And I know I told you guys that an atom is a round sphere, and this is gonna be the ugliest round sphere you've ever seen. I'm not that great at drawing circles, sorry about that. But you get the idea, right, you guys? Okay, so what we're looking at here is a cross section of an atom. Okay, so an atom is a round sphere. What I've done here is cut this in half, broken it open so you can see what's inside this atom. Okay, so what we're looking at here is a red inner core that's surrounded by these blue rings. And we said that there's three main parts to an atom, right? There's protons, neutrons, and electrons. Let's find out where these are in our atom. Okay, so do you guys remember from GChem, what hangs out in this red inner core? Is it gonna be protons, neutrons, or electrons? It's actually just gonna be protons and neutrons that you find in this red inner core. And then on the outside, that's where you're gonna find the electrons. Okay, so let's go ahead and label a couple parts to this diagram now. All right, so we've labeled the inner core, also known as the nucleus of an atom. And this nucleus, this inner core, contains protons and neutrons. Protons, abbreviated here as P+, because protons are positively charged. And neutrons, labeled here as N0, because neutrons are neutrally charged. Okay, so that's the nucleus, contains protons and neutrons. But where are the electrons at? Well, we said before that the electrons are going to be on the outside of the nucleus. But they're not just going to be scattered in random locations on the outside. They're going to be confined to these electron rings. Okay, so these blue rings that you see, these are also known as electron rings. Because that's where you find electrons. Makes sense, right? But the thing I want you guys to understand about these electrons in these electron rings is that an electron that's in one of these rings stays in one of those rings. It's confined to those rings. What I mean is, is that if an electron is in this ring, it's going to stay in this ring. It's not going to jump from this one to this one, or this one to this one, or this one to this one. An electron that's in one of those rings will stay in one of those rings, okay? But the thing that we don't know about electrons in these rings is their exact location. Okay, so an electron that's in this ring, we know that it's going to stay in this ring, but we don't know where it is exactly. You know, is it here? Is it here? Is it here? Is it here? Because it has the freedom to move anywhere it wants in that ring. Okay, so we know that an electron is going to stay in this ring, but we don't know its exact location. And this is kind of like with me and my dog. You know, when I leave to go out of the house, you know, I leave, I shut the door. So, you know, I know she's not going anywhere, but after I leave, you know, I know she's in the house, but, you know, is she in the bedroom? Is she in the bathroom? Is she in the kitchen? Who knows? Same thing with an electron that's in one of these rings. Okay, so you leave to go out, you shut the door on it, so you know it's confined to this ring, but is it here? Is it here? Is it here? I don't know. And you know, for me, I'd like to know where my dog is in the house. You know, is it in the bedroom, ripping up pillows? Is it eating a snack in the kitchen? Is it going to the bathroom in the bathroom? You know, I'd like to know. But the only way I'd be able to tell is if I installed security cameras in different areas of the house so I could see where she's at. But in chemistry, we don't have security cameras to see exactly where an electron is in one of these rings. But the closest thing we do have is mathematical formulas and some common sense. And when we use these formulas, it allows us to take a best guess as to where exactly that electron is located in one of these rings. And this best guess of the location of an electron in that ring is called an orbital. Okay, so let me say this one more time. 
We know that electrons that are in these rings are stuck in those rings. They're not going to jump from this one to this one, or this one to this one, or this one to this one. Electrons in these rings are stuck to those rings, but we don't know where the electrons are in those rings because they have the freedom to move around anywhere they want. So as chemists, we'd like to know the exact location or the best guess of a location as to where an electron is in one of those rings because it plays an important role in bonding and reactions. So what we have is some mathematical formulas and some common sense that allows us to guess where an electron is in one of these rings. And that guess of the location of an electron is known as an orbital. Okay, so let's write some of this stuff down. All right, so to recap, we've got our inner core, our nucleus, that consists of protons and neutrons, and then we've got electrons surrounding that on the outside. But we know that electrons aren't just scattered around in random locations on the outside. They're going to be confined to these blue rings that we see, and they're called electron rings. So we know that electrons that are in these rings are going to be confined to those rings. So an electron that's in this ring is going to stay in this ring. It's not going to jump from this one to this one or this one to this one. Okay, so we know that electrons in those rings are stuck in those rings. But electrons in the rings have the freedom to move wherever they want within that ring. Okay, so we know that an electron that's in this ring will stay in this ring, but we don't know its exact location. Is it here? 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 We don't know. But as chemists, we'd like to make a best guess as to where that electron is located. And that best guess is represented by the idea of an orbital. Okay, so the way we represent an orbital is just by using a rectangular box and then putting an electron inside. Okay, so normally you'll see this as a rectangular box with half-headed arrows inside. Okay, so a half-headed arrow like that and one like that. And this would stand for two electrons in there, but this is the same thing as I'm showing you here. I just drew it out as a little bit simpler form to show you that, hey, we've got an orbital that's designating that we think that the electron is right there. Okay, so it's not here, not here, not here, not here. We think it's our best guess that this electron is right there within that electron ring. And that best guess is known as an orbital. And hey, you guys, this is the same thing as if you were to draw my house Okay, and we were like, well, after we leave, we want to see where the dog is. Okay, so is the dog in the kitchen? Is it in the bedroom? Is it in the bathroom? Okay, so what we can do is, if we think it's down here, we can draw a rectangular box with the dog inside. And I'm not the best artist, you guys, I'm sorry. But the idea is that this would be an example of an orbital, our best guess as to where the dog is inside the house. It's not here, it's not here, it's not here. We think the dog's here, so draw a rectangular box and stick the dog inside. Same thing as we're doing here. We think that this electron is not here, not here, not here, not here, not here. We think that this electron is right here within this electron ring, so we put a rectangular box around it with an, electro with an electron inside, and we say that this is its orbital, our best guess as to where that electron is within that electron ring.